Are you trying to get faster at exercises so that you can more efficiently play the pieces you're learning? This will be on arpeggios. I'm gonna use the C major arpeggio as my example. I'm gonna show you how to get better at it and more efficient and faster at it. This is going to take time. This is not something that in one day you're gonna go from this to this, but I'm gonna show you how to get there. First thing you've gotta do, learn the arpeggios. Learn the arpeggio that you want to be able to play faster. For example, the C major arpeggio. I do have a video out on this already, so take a look for that. Otherwise, this is the um, best method in my book how to do this. There's two things you gotta do. You have to have the correct technique, and then you gotta use the metronome to start. The metronome is what will help you to not keep trying to go from slow, to go, okay, I'm gonna go faster now and your fingers are all over the place or nowhere near the keys. You have to gradually speed up. Let me talk about technique first thing though. So watch this side camera. I'm gonna show you just my right hand. Um, I'm gonna show you an example of what I consider to be um, not the most efficient technique. <laughs> I'm trying not to use the word bad. <laughs> There's so many things wrong with this technique already. Okay, let's see, watch this. I'm already missing notes because of this technique because I'm used to doing it the right way. There we go. I'm going to show you the same bad technique with the left hand. So, so many things wrong. It wasn't even. Um, I was moving my arms and my hands way too much. Did you see this cross under? <clears throat> Look at the angle of my hand. Look at my arm. It's way out here. Why is my elbow sticking out to get there? It doesn't need to be. One of the misconceptions of arpeggios is that you have to connect every single note. You actually don't have to do that. So these first three notes are easy to connect. My thumb, I've got a big hand and my thumb isn't any, coming anywhere near this C right here. So I'm definitely not gonna do this to get it there. Because I also don't want to play with the nail of my thumb either. Did you see what I did there? So watch me in slow motion. I'm going to go in slow motion. Now my thumb is starting to go under. And then it plays after I release the G and move over. Now, one thing my arm does need to do is it does need to follow the path of the notes. Notice that my whole hand, my hand and my arm are moving towards that. And on the way back down, it's kind of moving towards in here. Same thing goes with the left hand. My thumb, I, I almost considered my thumb to be this launcher here. Ah, it's gonna launch me over here. So having good technique, not over bending and turning your hands and your arms to get to the next note. Now to get good at this, you do have to start slow. So let's get the metronome out. If you're using an old school metronome like this one right here, I love my little see-through metronome, um, it, you, it's so easy to use. From the top, you've got 40. The bottom, you have 208, 208. And you might be thinking, yeah, but my digital metronome, it goes from like five up to 500 or 600. Both are tempos you will never use and are, are not efficient or not easy to use. You really just need a single tick that goes from 40 to 208. If you're going beyond 208, you really need to uh, learn to subdivide. If you're going lower than 40, again, you need to learn to use a different beat pattern. So let's say you are playing two notes per tick, stop playing two notes per tick and do one note per tick. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start really slow.
I'm using the digital metronome built into my keyboard right now. So this is not this one, but I'm gonna follow um, a simple rule. If you're using one of these, one tick faster every time you do it perfectly. Remember that? Did you hear which what I said there? Every time you do it perfectly. I could go further than that, but make sure that it's easy and perfect before you move on. With that, just one tick faster. If you're using a digital metronome that's built in or something on your phone, five beats faster each time. That's what I'm gonna follow. It's all built into my kawaii here. Now what I'm gonna show you is this slow, and I'm not gonna go through every single beat that would take an hour of video time. I'm not into that. So let me show you what I do. Now you can do two octaves, three octaves, four octaves. Okay, since I was talking while I was doing it, I think one of my beats might have been a little off, so I would actually do that again. Now, to start, do this one hand at a time to make sure you can, but if you're already on to two hands at a time, this is perfect. Start here. If you did it well, watch what happens if I go five faster. That doesn't really sound faster, does it? Let's see. I'm only gonna do two octaves this time. doesn't seem a lot faster. There's a reason for this, for doing it this way. You don't want it to feel faster. If it feels faster, you're going too much faster. If you can do it at that tempo, keep going up by five. Before you know it, you're gonna be going so much faster. Now, something you wanna do when you get to this faster tempo. All right, let's say you've been practicing this way and it's going a lot faster. Listen to that tempo and you're barely even able to keep up with the tempo that you just chose. Let's choose 180. This is a good tempo. So let's say we're here. All right, and I'm getting that down. I'm like, okay, if I go too much faster, I'm not gonna be able to really understand what my metronome is doing. And this is where I was talking about not going beyond that 208. So since this is an arpeggio with three notes, don't cut the tempo in half, cut it down to a third. Now this is gonna seem really hard at first, but you can do this. And this will help you to, be, to become better at using a metronome as well as better at your arpeggios. So let's cut it down to 60. Almost there, 60, okay. All right, so now we're gonna play three notes per tick. See how that sounds? It sounds like the same speed, right? That's because it is. Then still go up by five. Now notice that, it, do the math, if you go up by five per tick or per time you do it now, you're actually going um, up three times faster each time than you were before. That's okay. And before you know it, you are going to be playing it so fast. And just remember, be patient with yourself. This takes time. You're not gonna do this in one day. You may not do this in one week. You may not do it in one month. It's okay, as long as you're improving. Try three octaves, try four octaves. If you really want to be good at this, do four octaves. Four octaves really takes you the span of your keyboard. Let me show you one more technique that's really important when you do four octaves. I'm gonna show you the wrong way first. I always love showing the wrong way. And you're thinking, but Philip, you just showed, you just used the finger technique you told us to do. Yeah, but my body stayed in one spot. So we gotta do this. Ooh, 
move your body with the motion of the keys. The keys can go all the way down here and all the way up here. So you gotta make sure you move with it, not reach, reach. It makes it so much easier. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions for me, please let me know. And you can always join one of my Take Lessons Live classes and um, ask me any questions about technique in there or any technique that you're working on yourself.